man in charge of the investigation, Detective Inspector Stuart Harvey, and he joins us now. Uh, Detective Inspector, good morning to you. Oh, sorry, good afternoon. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Afternoon. How are you today? Um, I guess you have offered, um, if you like, your cooperation with the cold case because you are hopeful that you have information that can be added to that will lead to a conclusion in this case. You haven't given up all hope entirely. Oh, certainly not, Michael, no. Um, in fact, we believe that we're getting um, ever closer to actually finding what happened to Amberley um, back in 1992 and to actually establish the circumstances of her abduction. Can you take us through what happened, where she was, um, and, and the circumstances of that day? October the 17th, uh, It's uh, was it cold, was it wet, was it warm? How were a family there? What were the circumstances? Well, she just arrived um, in Kingston with her um, mother and younger brother and uh, her mother's partner. Um, they were on a bus and they uh, pulled up and met with some friends who lived on the lake shore here at Kingston. Um, as the, the day eventuated, they had a, um, had a bit of some boating activities. And then from there, they had a barbecue with a number of people. There was probably um, you know, about a dozen people uh, at that barbecue. These people weren't um, all known to each other. They were just people that were in Kingston at the time. Um, and some joined um, the group uh, later on. Um, and later in the evening, around around about uh, tea time, um, Amberley was last seen out the front of the address um, uh, by the road when some uh, one of the members of that party left. Um, and then when that member of the party returned, uh, she wasn't there. Um, it took probably 30 to 40 minutes before people realised that she'd gone missing. And from there, quite an extensive search uh, was undertaken that night and then over, over the rest of that weekend. Um, and unfortunately, she hasn't been seen since. Um, I guess in any investigation that involves this, the first suspects are always the family. So I guess local police of that time would have scrutinised the family's activities pretty extensively. Oh, for sure, yeah. And the people that were there that, uh, with Amberley at that time, they were, they were the young... Um, People of interest um, who we were really interested in um, knowing what the activities were, what their movements were. But um, as time progressed, it became clear that um, certainly um, uh, Amberley's mother and her partner and the two people that lived at the address they were at weren't, um, uh, weren't involved in her disappearance uh, in any way, shape or form. And I guess you deduced that by talking to everybody, working out where everybody was at a certain part in time. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we formed a really good timeline um, in regards to those people. Uh, and there were a number of other people that were there that evening and uh, the progress is being, made, is being made on working out uh, which of those people um, may have been responsible for her disappearance. So you're quite clear that it was somebody at that particular function or surrounds... No, at and known by the others who was responsible for the abduction of that child? What we we certainly believe is that uh, the person who abducted Amberley uh, was living in Kingston at the time. They weren't, uh, it's highly unlikely that they were somebody that was just passing through the township and um, abducted her. Uh, we have effectively eliminated our um, accidental deaths. Uh, we don't believe that she's in the lake or was ever in the lake. And, we, um, and there was an extensive search which um, went through the whole of Kingston um, in the months after her disappearance. So we're really confident that she hasn't um, kept, you know, been the result of uh, her disappearance, wasn't a result of some accident. We believe that she had been abducted and that's from somebody that was in Kingston on that day. Um, the obvious question, is she alive? We don't believe she is, no. Okay. So you were looking at an abduction murder here? Yeah, that's correct. Right. Um, how long... I mean, the obvious thing, I'm sorry to ask this question as a layman, but why has it taken 30 years to be able to... Not, well, to identify the culprit and bring that person to justice? What's, what's impeded that conclusion from your point of view? 
Well, it's an incredibly complex case when you actually go through all the information and the fact is that we haven't had any, any eyewitnesses to say what happened to her. Uh, quite often, uh, cases which involve, uh, which are similar to this, there's normally an eyewitness that would have seen seen something or we, we would have been provided with information which is, would have led us in the direction of the offender. And we haven't had that over the, you know, over the last 30 years. But the reward process was um, very valuable to us in that we started to get some extra information which we weren't aware of previously. Uh, that information um, has led us uh, 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 to progress the case uh, forward. And now we're looking um, after the cold case show on Tuesday night, we're getting further information which hopefully will um, send us in the right direction of who was responsible for her uh, disappearance. Right. But you think that whoever was responsible for her disappearance and murder is already known to you. You don't expect to have anybody from out of left field involved in that equation. Well, our belief is that it's somebody that was living in Kingston on that day. So you'll, but you'll, you'll, you'll know who they are, won't you, to be fair? Yes, we, yeah, we were uh, at the time of, the dis- of her disappearance and the investigation that took place, everybody that was in the township on that day was uh, identified and yeah. known. So um, it's taken a long time to eliminate uh, a lot of people and we're sort of getting down to a, a much smaller group of who we'd des- describe as persons of interest. Have you... Um performed any form of psychological profile on the potential offender? Uh, yeah, we have uh, used a number of... Uh, well, first of all, it's a he. It would be a male, right? Well, that would be that would be the assumption. But that, uh, um, at the end of the day, we have to keep an open mind on those, that group of pers- those, those people of interest. Yeah. So we have to keep a bit of a... Um, an open mind on that, but the, the um, efforts that we've made have involved uh, profiling and have involved, um, uh, you know, obtaining expert opinions on on who may uh, be responsible for this type of defending. Right, and I'm taking it won't be a family man with five kids and a respectable job at the local Presbyterian church. Well, as I say, you've got to keep an open mind and um, nothing's uh, beyond the realms of possibility. It, it would be unlikely because that person would um, have been accounted for if they were in the area at the time and they would have people that would um, yeah, be able them. to alibi them. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, 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 but, I mean, so we're most likely talking um, about a single individual or somebody who was uh, singular in their lifestyle. Uh, possibly, but uh, it could also be somebody that... Um, uh, has involved somebody else in the uh, offending as well. Right. And, um, that, and we have to yeah. keep an open mind, we yeah. have to keep a very open mind of what may have possibly happened to her, Kimberly. Yeah. And while, um, you know, there may be some sinister um, motive for what happened, there may also be another motive. But um, at this stage, we haven't had any evidence to suggest that that's occurred. Right. Um, are you happy with the police investigation of the time? I guess 30 years ago, it probably wouldn't be as professional then by definition as it would be now, would it? Yeah, well, I think the difficulty at the time was that it was very much treated as a missing person case um, and that she had wandered off and there was um, uh, a, a real suspicion that she'd ended up in um, Black Hawk Tapu. Yeah. And uh, I think at, at the time the, the staff and the um, people investigating it did the best they could on the, with the circumstances they've had. But over the passage of time, it's become clear that a lot of the alternative um, uh, uh, stories that, 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 you know, the the alternative ways that she could have disappeared have been eliminated. Right. Um, Now, the mother at the time was Nicola Cruikshank. She was, I think, only 24 years old when uh, Amber Lee disappeared. Um, Do you, I guess you stay in pretty clear contact with her during investigations like this, do you? Yeah, the officer that's been leading this investigation over the last uh, decade or so, uh, Detective Sergeant John Kane, has had regular contact with Nikki Cruikshank. I have to say that um, you know she has been um, steadfast in her commitment to get her daughter back. Uh, she never wavers on that. Um, but uh, you know, from a parent's point of view, it must be the worst nightmare um, not knowing what has happened to uh, your daughter. 
and for her, uh, she lives that night on a daily basis. Mm, no, I'm sure that's right. Now, um, can I ask then, please, oh, well, the really interesting thing is that you, for a wee while there, you were, well, there was obviously a suggestion that she had been abducted and abducted. So um, I think there was a police identikit picture of Amber Lee at, when she was 10 years old to say, well, this is what she'd look like today, yes? So initially, yep. um, you, weren't, you weren't even sure she'd been murdered. Well, initially and over the years, there's been a number of theories about what could have happened to her, and that was said one of them. Uh, I think over the last decade or so, um, it's become clear that um, there's been no evidence that she's um, still alive. There's been no um, information, reliable information to say that she's living in New Zealand anywhere or anywhere in the world. Um, so, and you would expect uh, that if she was that, um, with the passage of time, that this would have been revealed. Yeah. Okay. If anybody does have any information, though, is that reward still available? Yeah, the reward does uh, is still available, um, and anybody that has any information that may lead to um, uh, the arrest um, and charging of a person responsible would be entitled um, to that. Um, um, and but we just ask generally that if any members of the public have got any information whatsoever. You know, um, let's put the reward aside for a second here. We've got a mother that's been for 30 years wondering what's happened to her daughter. Um, she just wants some closure in some way, shape or form. And if we can get Amberly back to her, that was always the objective of this investigation. Uh, it still is and it still will be into the future and we won't give up until uh, we've achieved that objective. Um, I, 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 the obvious question that somebody would ask, I guess, um, the father of Amberly is not mentioned in anything that I see in any of the background material to this. Um, is is he still alive? Is he still involved? Uh, has he been assisting the police? Um, or is that not your priority? No, no, he's, um, he's certainly um, our officer in charge has been in touch with him uh, recently. Um, and, um, yep, he's certainly... Um, still alive and he's certainly still around and um, he was never anywhere near Kingston at the time of um, Amberley's disappearance so um, he's been well and truly eliminated as a suspect. All right. Now, if people do have, listening to this, have some information, uh, what's the best contact to make with you or your team? Um, if they would like to ring 105 um, and touch base with our communication um, people there, um, they will then pass the appropriate messages on to um, our officers. Our officers will get back to people that do ring. Uh, we've had over uh, 20 plus calls already um, since uh, Tuesday um, and we will, we will endeavour to get back to everybody that calls us within the next few days. All right. Okay. Um, thank you very much for joining us uh, and I wish you the very best of luck in this. Uh, uh, I guess it must surprise you that Madeline um, McCann's got more coverage in New Zealand than this little girl. Yeah, well, I think um, because there's been so many theories um, in regards to Amber Lee that um, it's only really now, once we put it all together, that we can say with some certainty that um, you know she's yeah. she's been abducted and and killed. And I think um, maybe people will start understanding that a bit better now. Thank you so much for joining us, and the very best of luck to you. Um, that is Detective Inspector. Uh, Stuart Harvey.